It is Friday, May 15th. Let's talk PlayStation. Starting off, as always, with our PlayStation Plus reminder. The May games that are currently available, City Skylines and Farming Simulator 2019, you got plenty of time to grab these or add them to your library. Uh, let's start real quick with a release date update for Iron Man VR, July 3rd for this game now. If you remember, this was delayed alongside The Last of Us Part Two. Easily overshadowed there given the circumstance, but if you were looking out for this game, July 3rd is the new release date for this title. We also have another update out of LTPS from last week. If you remember, we were going over the Inside Xbox show for Series X, all those games that they were indirectly announcing for PS4 and PS5, well, a lot of those games were actually left up in the air, not entirely clear. Well, we do have some clarity here now for Scarlet Nexus. This is the game out of Bandai Namco. It will be coming to PS4 and PS5, and also Vampire uh, Bloodlines, uh, Vampire Masquerade Bloodlines 2. That will also be available on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Now, we had a bit of a swing and a miss in terms of the PS5's potential release month. We know the release window, holiday 2020, but that could be October, November, December. We're all thinking November. However, a translated job listing uh, for Sony Interactive Entertainment uh, pegged the console scheduled to release October 2020. Famitsu reached out to Sony. Sony clarified uh, this is not the case. Uh, basically, this was a recruitment center that wrote the job listing. They didn't work directly from Sony and therefore not accurate information. So unfortunately, we don't have an exact month for PS5 just yet. But to clarify that that is something you may have heard, it's incorrect. Now, many of us are very familiar with Sony's Worldwide Studios. This is Sony's suite of developers that are located globally, of course. But uh, we've known them like that since 2005 when they were originally formed. However, with the launch of PS5, this will no longer be the case. They are being rebranded to PlayStation Studios. So we have a new logo, but Sony also released a 17 second animation that's gonna play before uh, trailers, the boot sequence of games. Looks very iconic, like it's trying to be, right? You got the buttons flying across the screen. Major PlayStation IP interspersed into the, uh, the buttons there. Very Marvel-esque. I'm seeing a lot of people say that, and that seems pretty accurate. Although, ironically, uh, this is not new. This is the same sequence Sony used for the Ratchet & Clank movie, the PlayStation Originals, uh, like uh, Powers, that was on PlayStation View, that was like original content, right? It wasn't a PlayStation IP. And that was actually years ago, before the formation of PlayStation Productions, which is the more recent uh, initiative Sony's doing to adapt PlayStation IP to TV and film, right? They're still working on Twisted Metal and also the Uncharted movie, whenever that's supposed to come out. Twisted Metal's supposed to be a TV show, but... Besides the point, this is going to be a new effort that Sony's doing to, I guess, solidify the brand a bit more. The reasoning here is that uh, basically Sony wants people to understand that if you see this first, you know it's an IP that they own. So they even explained that it might be a second party developer, right? So it doesn't have to be a studio that Sony owns, but rather if you see this and then whatever gameplay or trailer follows, you know this is a PlayStation owned game and it's supposed to carry the same weight as all the other games that we've seen from Sony's worldwide studios. Uh, another point that they made is that, you know, these games don't have a tough, th these games don't have a problem selling, right? Like Last of Us does well, got a ward as well, Horizon, that's never been a problem, but rather uh, they want this uh, same imagery and weight to be carried to some of their smaller uh, games like Concrete Genie, for example, if you're not really into games or know that much about developers and publishers, you may not realize that Concrete Genie comes from Sony's Worldwide Studios, right? So that's the reasoning there. Now we have a quote from Sony's Global Vice President of Marketing, Eric Klempel. He says, we've never had any problem getting people to play these games. They're usually critically acclaimed, award-winning franchises that are games of the year. But for the average consumer, it's not always clear what games come directly from our Worldwide Studios. And to your point, they've come to understand that in many cases, these are usually really robust, innovative single player experiences. Of course, there is a variety of other games that don't fit into that mold, but nonetheless, we want to make sure people know that these are the games coming from our worldwide studios. So, they also know that the sequence could be smaller or it could be tailored to one particular franchise, so not just a bunch of PlayStation IP, but like one particular character in there that evolves over time in the buttons. Uh, not a move that I think they really needed to do, although if there's anything to be said here, that it, I guess it probably is a bit more marketable than the uh, mouthful of saying Sony Worldwide Studios, but... Uh, yeah, no longer that. Moving forward, it will be PlayStation Studios. Moving on to our next news story, we finally have some updated Sony financials for the quarter ending March 31st, 2020. Total PlayStation 4 hardware sales are now at 110.4 million sold worldwide. Very impressive, of course, although on a downward trend, we're near the end life cycle of PlayStation 4, so it's only gonna get slower and slower to sell more units. But uh, if we do look at the platform totals here, Sony is now about 8 million consoles away from that number three spot where it's being held by Game Boy. 
So it's probably going to hit that, although it just it might take a bit longer now. Also, PlayStation Plus subscribers are up substantially. Uh, it's a pretty big growth jump from the last quarter, which was around 36.9 million units, if I'm not mistaken. But now it's sitting at 41.5 million. So we saw an increase there. Digital sales are also overtaking physical once more, although this is slightly an outlier situation given the pandemic and that people are home. And for a lot of people, this is the more accessible way to buy games. But 66% uh, sales were digital for the months of January, February, and March. Now, one fascinating thing that came out of the financial earnings call with the chief financial officer, Hiroki Totoki, somebody asked him about uh, basically Xbox's uh, strategy and how that will compare to PS5. They asked, some say PS5 promotion is falling behind Xbox. Would you give passing score to what PS team has done? And he answers, we consider things strategically, but doing our best. As for pass or fail, I would wait for PS5 sales to make that judgment. You know, it's not a very crazy statement, but it is one I think of confidence. This is Sony basically saying, let's not fear monger or compare right now. Let's just wait for our product to come out and evaluate from that point forward what we did right and wrong. And Sony's not dumb in this regard, right? They know current market conditions. They know what they're doing with PS4 in terms of sales. Uh, I've said this a number of times, you know where this is going, but as compelling of a product as I think Series X is and will be, Sony would have to really mess up with PlayStation 5 in order to not sell a lot of consoles, right? Uh, Europe, they outsell Xbox One 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 5 to 1, depends on the country. Japan is a free market, second world countries heavily favor PlayStation as well. So, uh, you know, it is more a situation where it's an uphill battle from Microsoft's perspective. But uh, this is the company, I think, really holding their ground here where uh, they think they have something pretty good and uh, hopefully that will be the case. They also reiterated that PlayStation 5 is still on track for a holiday 2020 release despite uh, COVID-19 concerns. So in the uh, earnings report, it says, regarding the launch of PlayStation 5, although factors such as employees working from home and restrictions on international travel have presented some challenges in regards to part of the testing process and the qualification of production lines, development is progressing with the launch of the console scheduled for the 2020 holiday season. At this point in time, major problems have not arisen in the game software development pipeline for Sony's own first party studios or its partner studios. So of course, good news there. Microsoft has been pretty vocal about this as well, that they're not expecting any delays with Series X, although Phil Spencer has gone on record to say, uh, current short-term game development doesn't seem to be a problem, but it's still up in the air in terms of the longer spectrum here where games that might be slated or scheduled for 2021 or 2022, they might have a problem. He actually brought up, you know, things like mocap or voiceover work, you know, that kind of stuff very much requires being in the studio and working together and that's stuff that is not taking place right now and that is something that is very mid-development right so unless you've wrapped up a lot of that stuff you can't continue game development and so that is a good point where depending on where a game is development wise it could very much heavily be delayed but that could be further down the road but as of right now a lot of games that are slated for this first year of ps5 and series x probably still might uh, hit their dates just fine now of course a lot of people still wondering when are we going to see ps5 what about those games well, if you remember two weeks ago on LTPS, we had a story about Jeff Grubb, the reporter from GamesBeat, how he was hinting that June 4th would be some kind of event that would be more game focused and that we could potentially see hardware sooner. No major update here, although he is doubling down on this sentiment, basically saying June 4th is something, uh, dubbing it the slate of play, which when somebody uh, asked uh, to clarify that on Twitter, he said, uh, should be an entire slate of games, a lot. So we should be expecting something of a decent magnitude, right? We've been spoon fed uh, PS5 info that is like somewhat insignificant now at this point until we get to the major stuff like the dual sense. But hopefully, this would be something that has a lot of substance to it. And as I've argued before, whether it's late May, early June, mid June, it's close enough as is, just a few more weeks, and we'll actually get something that we can look at with PlayStation 5. Now, thankfully, this past week did have something PS5 related that you could look at, which was the big reveal, Unreal Engine 5 running on a PlayStation 5. We got a seven minute technical demo called Lumen in the Land of Nanite, which really showcases next generation tech. Um, it really shows off the SSD, how they can be leveraged to bring in all these high quality assets. The polygon count, of course, is incredible. We did a video on this uh, right away, discussing the more broad aspects of what this really means. Of course, Digital Foundry is the place to go if you want to get more incredible in-depth analysis here that uh, most people don't understand and then it gets into the Mark Cerny territory. But the important thing here is that uh, this actually has been a bit of a hot debate issue, not an issue, but some developers have been discussing how this dynamically changes how 
development works for certain games, right? For the modeling techniques being presented to them. Because the thing about technical demos is that, yeah, as a consumer, you can look at this and go, oh, this is what, you know, might be possible on next gen. But this is really uh, more of a sales pitch to developers. Hey, here's Unreal Engine 5. Here's what you can make on Unreal Engine 5 as a vertical slice. That's what this technical demo was, a vertical slice where it looks entirely complete, right? It looks like a finished video game. That's what a vertical slice is. And it's showcasing Lumen, the global illumination, and Nanite, this uh, new adaptation for uh, these high poly assets. And uh, so now the debate is coming up about, you know, how do we move away from traditional techniques to mega scans? How do we use mega scans for like a 30 some odd hour video game that was brought up by uh, Raf Grissetti, an art director at Santa Monica Studio. But uh, I'd like to share a quote with you here from Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney talking about PlayStation 5's SSD. He said, we've been working super close with Sony for quite a long time on storage. The storage architecture on the PS5 is far ahead of anything you can buy on anything on PC for any amount of money right now. It's going to help drive future PCs. The PC market is going to see this thing ship and say, oh wow, SSDs are going to need to catch up to this. So this is something I've mentioned uh, prior where this is like one aspect where, you know, console generations, they come out, they bump the minimum for pretty much all game development, right? So obviously PC is this open platform where games can scale depending on your rig. And uh, so it's always great when a new console generation comes in. So that minimum is raised even further. But of course, you build a $2,000 rig, you're going to do much better. You're going to be much better off than a console. But this is a weird area where this one particular component of PlayStation 5 uh, and even Series X, where the minimum is this very fast NVMe SSD, where this is not typical with PC gaming. A lot of people are fine even just using an, uh, a SATA SSD, which actually has much different uh, drive speeds, even though it's still an SSD, right? Um, so one thing that somebody actually brought up on Twitter to Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney was uh, somebody was comparing PS5 SSD speeds to theoretical M2 drives, and Tim Sweeney replied, these PC numbers are theoretical and are from drive and a kernel memory. From there, it's a slow and circuitous journey through software decompression to GPU driver, swizzling into video memory where you can eventually use it. The PS5 path for this is several times more efficient. And this is something that Mark Cerny dived heavily into when talking about the SSD controller that uh, they, had, uh, they had built up. And what's funny is that this is being compounded by the fact that, you know, we keep saying SSDs are the real advancement here, that the minimum is now so much better because of the SSDs. And uh, it's being brought to light that this particular demo is running 1440p, 30 frames per second. We also discussed in the video dedicated to the Unreal Engine 5 reveal that uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla has been promised a 30 frames per second minimum. A lot of people now really getting upset that, oh my god, are we still getting 30 frames per second games? Are we still getting, you know, not native 4K? But uh, it's just a circumstance where depending on what you do with closed boxes, it's give and take. Uh, and, you know, it's funny, Digital Foundry is even arguing that... Uh, 1440p isn't all that bad when you consider just how crisp the game uh, actually looks, or at the very least, this demo, right? The way it was presented, the way that these assets are uh, being made and how they're shown to the player, how you're not getting any more pop in, any of this mixed up level of detail. It's just so sharp and it looks so good that it's just so negligible to the point where you might not even need native 4K if you can achieve such high quality assets being streamed in this quickly, right? So. This is just a, a circumstance where, once again, you would hope that if developers go that route of offering toggles, which was pretty frequent on PS4 Pro and X1 X games, that that would be a route that you can explore if a higher frame rate really means something to you. But uh, there's also something to be said about how this tactical demo looks really good and we've already got a number of developers uh, just theorizing how easy this really is to make something that looks that incredible for a game that lasts over 10 hours and uh, this will be something where it might not you're you might not get that many games that look that good right uh, and you know we we're already really in a situation like that anyways nowadays where some of the prettiest most beautiful looking games are you know they're far and few between you can't really say that there's a plethora of games that look look absolutely knock out of the park fantastic there's always usual suspects that we can point out, and uh, that will once again be the case going into PS5 and Series X. Next up, Sony's recent state of play that happened just yesterday, and it was a full state of play focusing on Ghost of Tsushima. So they made the announcement uh, on Tuesday, or was it Monday, but either way, we already had the state of play come and go. And it was a full gameplay walkthrough of Ghost of Tsushima, about 18 minutes long, much needed. So this was something where, yeah, we've had trailers and gameplay trailers of Ghost of Tsushima prior, but I and many other people agreed 
We didn't really see enough of the game to really get what it was going for in terms of exploration combat. This really solved that, so we got a pretty good look at the game and uh, very much focuses on limiting the amount of HUD going on. You've got no traditional waypoints. You use the, the wind to guide you in a specific direction. There's a big emphasis on following animals that you run into, so animals try to lead you to certain events and uh, notable things that are happening in this constantly moving and changing world. Uh, when we get to the combat section of the game, there's two different ways to approach it where you can just be a straight up samurai, right? And do kind of the parrying aspect there and sort of the, the standoff section that they showed off that looked pretty cool. You could also play as the ghost portion of Tsushima, right? Where you, you're more stealthy and you use fear tactics against your, your enemies. It looks interesting. I'm a bit up in the air still on combat. This is something really hard to evaluate when you look at it, whereas you can look at a game world and think, oh, that's something I really want to explore. But combat's something a bit different. So I want to wait and see on that. I'm not sure how that will really play out. I hope there's a lot more depth and it feels good and it doesn't feel very clunky or maybe not. It looks maybe too shallow. Another thing that is great, uh, we already knew this, but you can still use a Japanese voice talent right off the bat, which... You know, you could easily argue, well, that's dumb that you got voice English voice talent and it's a Japanese game, but you can use the Japanese voice talent right away. Also, a black and white filter, which is really unique and cool, right? Normally, you don't see something like that until you beat the game and it's like a toggle that the developer has chosen to add, which is far and few between anyway. You don't usually get those weird little fun uh, modifiers at the end of a game. Naughty Dog does a lot of those. The photo mode also looks incredible. They're giving a lot of attention to this where you can alter wind direction and add effects and do like a, a short video or a short still, like a GIF. Looks, it does look so cool. I love the attention to detail they're putting into certain areas like this. But overall, looks great. I think this was something that the game needed for people to have a bit more confidence on if this is something they want to buy or maybe want to skip or wait till it gets a little bit cheaper. But I think it looks great, uh, so I can't wait to try it. Now, this news story keeps making the rounds, so I'm just going to acknowledge this and not make it seem as though a big PlayStation channel isn't covering a news story that's popping up a lot. But there's a job listing for uh, Gorilla Games about, uh, I think, again, it's a vegetation artist, but what's being cherry-picked out of this job listing is uh, that they're going for industry-leading benchmark graphics. Um, which, you know, it's like, okay, well, obviously, <laughs> Horizon was a very pretty game. Gorilla makes very beautiful looking games. So I don't know if it's, it's like not a news story, right? Where it's like, of course, they're making a game that's going to look, probably going to look very pretty. Although it is worth noting, uh, if we want to be somewhat relevant here, like we mentioned with the Unreal Engine 5 thing where, you know, it's still going to be a thing where only a handful of games are going to look that good. Gorilla is one of those developers where you can look at their games and think, okay, they're, they're one of those studios that puts out games that look that good. So uh, the job listing, I'm sure, is very accurate in what they're looking for. Now, we also learned this past week that the PlayStation Store in China is closed indefinitely, which this does not affect other territories, so don't worry. This is actually very specific to China in that China obviously heavily regulates the PlayStation Store and game consoles in general. And uh, so I guess the issue here actually is that the genuine PlayStation Store that Sony went live with on PS4 over there only had like... 11 some odd games to actually download and purchase because again it's just getting licenses and actually launching there is ridiculous and it's well so new because the ban was lifted not that long ago right and uh, so i guess a vulnerability was discovered in the playstation store in china where people were accessing other territories and able to purchase content that way so i'm assuming what happened here is sony's closing the store for maintenance closing up whatever loopholes are there and this is a situation where whatever was discovered, either Sony's being proactive to, you know, not get in trouble with the Chinese government or the Chinese gov government already stepped in and said, you got to fix this right now or you're getting kicked out of here because that's very much how that really plays out over there. Now, finally, it's time to get to Let's Talk Plus, the weekly Let's Talk PlayStation giveaway where one of you could win a $10 PSN code. I would like to congratulate this viewer right here. I'll be contacting you very soon via email or Twitter. If you would like to win a $10 code, it's very easy. We do this every single week on Let's Talk PlayStation. Follow the link down below. Support on this channel a number of ways can gain you an entry. And I'll announce the winner next week because I am trying to pay for your games. Those are all the news stories that I want to talk about with you all. We had two videos this past week, one about PS5 and Series X's price tag. Uh, it's being theorized 
surprise that Microsoft could undercut Sony in terms of price with their big balance sheet. And uh, so we dive into the feasibility of that, but also what each company has said regarding price. And then uh, Wednesday, we went over Unreal Engine 5, as we've mentioned previously, but if it's a big enough PS5 news story, we'll do it right away, which we did. Uh, this coming Tuesday, however, I don't know just yet because the video has not been made and I will do that over the weekend. So as always, stay tuned on Tuesday for that video. Uh, but that is it. That concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Bernanke. Thank you all so much for talking with me and I will see you all next Friday.